Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Kate and every Friday I bring you a book review. So for those of you that have watched my February reading roundup, I'll put a little link to it above. Um, this book was mentioned in one of the books I read in February, so you might know what's coming. And that is Strange Magic by Sid Moore. And it's the first in the series of the Essex Witch Museum books. And it was sent to me by a friend, so it's not something I possibly would have normally picked up. Actually, when it arrived on my doorstep, I did, with this um, cover, I did actually think it was kind of a Mexican Day of the Dead type of book, which I was really excited for, because I thought that would be really cool, but it's not. It's about some witches in Essex in the 1500s. Um, and the main witch that is mentioned in this book is actually a real person. You can go and Google her. She's called Ursula Cadence. And it is fascinating. I did not know there was this whole witch thing going on in the 1500s in the UK. I don't know if I've been living under a rock, but I just didn't know that. I don't know if you did, but I didn't. And so yeah, that was really interesting for me because I really, I find all that really interesting. I went to Boston a few years ago and when I was in Boston I took a train to Salem and I went around all the witch museums and all of that there and like learned about all the history of the Salem witch trials and stuff and you know I studied the crucible at school so I know all about the Salem witch trials but little did I know that two hours down the road there were some British witch trials going on centuries earlier. It's fascinating. Literally, I think 500 years ago this year, um, Ashley Cadence was hung. Just really, really interesting. So, yeah, I didn't know any of that. Right, on to the book. You're like, yeah, okay, enough rambling about witches. We're here for the story. Um, yeah, so it's told from the perspective of Rosie Strange, who inherits the Essex Witchcraft Museum from her late grandfather, who she wasn't particularly close with and she just kind of sets the whole thing in motion and she meets her curator so this is all on the back so this is not spoilers so i just thought i'd quickly read the back just to make sure but i'm sure it's all on the back yeah so her first thought is obviously is a skeptic she does not believe in these things and her first thought is to literally put the witch museum on the market and take the money and run and then she gets to know Sam, the curator, um, and things get set into motion. A whole thing gets set into motion. So, uh, Ashley Cadence is a big, big part of this story, and um, Google her because her bones. I don't know if I should say this because it is a spoiler for the book, but then it is something that actually happened in real life. So don't know if that's a spoiler. Basically her bones were dug up and found in the 1920s. I think that might be a spoiler. I will put a spoiler alert here and I'll do a timestamp because I'm not sure if it is. See, this is why I haven't done any non-fiction book reviews because it's difficult. But yeah, so basically meet Sam and then someone comes into the musician. Someone comes into the museum and it sets them off on a whole, like, whole thing that's a whole chain of things in motion. And it's so interesting, the things we find out. And um, I love that it's told from the perspective of, of Rosie and that the characters in it are, like, they're not, not portrayed as, like, I don't know, running around in circles naked under the full moon. You know, that kind of stereotypical thing that's associated with people who are into witchcraft and they're not the characters in this book aren't really hippy dippy i guess I, they're not portrayed as hippies or anything they're just portrayed as normal people as academics the people that work in the museum and then rosie her day job is as far away from working in a witch museum as you can possibly get but i love that it's told from their perspective and Sam, the curator, says keeping an open mind but healthy scepticism. And you definitely see that coming through in the book. Whereas Rosie is a complete, you know, sceptic. She told from that perspective of things, of a complete sceptic when certain things do happen that are possibly unexplainable, she finds a rationale for them. 
I mean, I'm personally on the side of unexplainable things do happen in life and there are witches and ghosts and, you know, but Rosie's not, she's on the other end of the spectrum to me and I think it's more interesting having the book written from her perspective than from, say, someone who's got my perspective on things. So that's really interesting and just the whole, the whole book is just so interesting because there's things in there about supernatural things that happen and that possibly happen in real life as well. Um, I wish I did go into more detail in this because I <laughs> really want to, but I just can't. But yeah, the Ursula Cadence thing and the witch trials of the um, 1500s were really interesting. And actually some stuff happened here in Surrey, down in the Surrey Hills to do with Hitler and the occult that I learned about in this book, but that also actually happened. So I don't think that is a spoiler. That's a spoiler of Google it. So yeah, really interesting book, really, really fascinating. It's a history lesson as well as a fiction novel and an adventure and a time's running out and a solving a problem novel. It's really, really good. It took me a while to read. It did take me a while to get into it. I will say that it's a bit of a slow, it's a slow burner. It takes a while to get into it, but I definitely say persevere with it definitely definitely persevere because it is worth it and don't read it before you go to bed at night towards the end because the the more kind of supernatural stuff starts happening the further into the book you get obviously and um I don't know if it's just me but that kind of stuff gets into my dreams and I have all sorts of funny dreams and it's just it's not fun <laughs> um yeah it doesn't make for the most restful peaceful night sleep. Anyway, when I do believe in ghosts and I do possibly think that where I live is haunted, possibly. I don't know. Possibly. Yeah, this book was just such an interesting read and I learned so much about the history. I went back and did a bit of googling about the um, history of all of that and I think it made it really real as well and, the, and how real these things were to these people and how awful conditions were then and how lucky we have it now. I know we complain about stuff now, but we don't know we we're born. And I think that's the thing for me that's really stood out for, from this book is that it's made things that happened, you know, centuries ago, it's made it feel real. Because I think there's a real, the real, it's really easy to watch something like Game of Thrones or, I don't know, Bridgerton and think that, you know, this happened hundreds of years ago. And it doesn't necessarily feel that real, whereas this makes it feel real. And, like, the way that Ursula ended up dying or being killed is just awful. And then, you know, the impact that that had on her family, because she had a family. And that really made me think it made it much more real for me because I think it's so easy because it's so long ago to kind of, to you know, not feel the realness of it and not feel, feel the empathy and the sympathy with the family who went through that and to just really feel so grateful that we don't live in those conditions anymore. No one's going to get hung and yeah, I think we're just very, very, I think it makes you very grateful for the world we live in today as much as we're living through a global pandemic and we're all stuck at home at least for the most part we all have nice homes we all have running water you know sanitization and things like that we're not stuck in some horrible disgusting prison or something tangent here but it just made it made i suppose it made history come alive for me and feel a bit more real and it made me really think about things and it made me made me think about my beliefs as well and it's yeah it's just a really good book and I'm in the process I'm going to order the um next books for it so I'm going to read those quite a lot of reading to do in March I've got all those books from a box of stories to read as I said in a previous video I'm working my way through the Game of Thrones series again or the Ice and Fire Fire and the Shut Up now and go <laughs> but yeah I really enjoyed this book and I hope you do too, and I hope you've read it, and please do get in touch if you have read it, because I really, really want someone to talk to about it, especially if you've read it recently, um, because my friend who sent it to me, 
she's read the whole series and she's read them a million times so it's not quite as fresh in her mind and quite as mind-blowing as it is for me at the moment I guess it's I don't know she's just she's just a bit like blase about it because she's read it so many times it's not new to her whereas it's new to me so if you read it please do get in touch and I will see you next week with another book review bye